funny. So the most memorable interaction I ever had, and this, I would say the one that means most to me, mm-hmm. right? And it, it's funny because I don't think I've ever mentioned this one, but so it was actually at a club. <laughs> and, and it's not in the way you think. Like, Whoa. What's up? Celebrity. Oh my god. What is up? <laughs> so you're in Taipei now? Yeah, I'm in Taipei. I'm having uh, a my girlfriend's calling me on semester. Got it. Ah. Right, cool. I was like um yeah, I was I'm in Taipei and it's been like the greatest trip ever. And then all of a sudden today it just got so cold. Oh, like so cold. But I remember my dad was like, "Oh, like oh, when Hong Kong, I don't think, don't think I don't know." And I was like, "Oh, like how cold can it be, right?" But it is like I assume it's similar to Hong Kong, like, but it's it's like nine degrees, but it, it feels, feels colder. like colder. Like, mm-hmm. Feels like it's like one. I'm like, dude, like yeah. it's yeah. like, as cold as Canada here. It's the kind of cold that layers won't help. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's so like I was freezing. Like my hands, I'm like, dude, like, what is going on here? Yes. Subdong is so it's yeah, so subdong, real. Exactly. It's so real. Cause it's like it's in, it's in. It, you, there's no way of escaping. Anywhere there's moisture, you're feeling cold. Oh my god. Like Subdong is like like I remember because it's my first time ever like here in January or so. And I'm just like, wow, like he wasn't kidding. And it's it's also not cold enough to put like heaters everywhere in like each room and it each building. So Honestly, yeah. this morning this morning I legit woke up, I was like what the hell is going on? <laughs> I remember like taking like a two hour exam in high school and like with like puffy jacket writing the answers because there's no and they like open the window to lao tong la hong lao tong like the air is just <laughs> it, it's crazy because I'll be honest like indoors it's more comfortable in Canada just because we have heating mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. Sure. yeah like it's oh, yeah. crazy the heating part yeah we don't have heating in Macau well, today, guys, we have a special, special guest, if you haven't noticed. It's Sheldon from Canto Mando. Yeah, hey, I'm not that special. You guys make me feel so good about myself. <laughs> oh, my God. The first time, I remember the first time I found you guys' channel. I think I was already here. It was a little late, but, like, it was a couple years back. And I was like, oh, my God. Canto Mando? It's, like, literally, I don't know, like, it made me feel like home because I, I moved away from Macau and like just seeing people interested to talk about Cantonese, which is something just something we grew up with, you know, like, but yeah. Yeah, no, you guys, like, you don't realize, like, I mean, there's, there's just not that much. I mean, there is more so now, but they're just like a lot of people kind of like keep the Canto or the Mando or like or whatever, like on the down low and just really embrace like that Western side. Mm-hmm. So you guys don't, I don't know if you guys see that. Not that you've been here for a while, but so many ABCs, they kind of, I mean, it's changing now in the past couple of years. When I was growing up, it was like, we got to be, we got to be like as Western as we can be. Mm. But it was. Yeah. And that was like more of your um, content back then too, right? But then you guys still incorporate some like Chinese into it though, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean, our, our, our goal, like when we first kind of started off was really just like, we want to hopefully inspire other Acadian or Asian Americans to embrace the heritage language mm-hmm. and be able to like speak it like whether it's like Cantonese Mandarin I remember we just sang on Shanghainese once and, and it's just like anything yeah nice how did you guys become friends like you guys are so close it's so cute I love it <laughs> <laughs> uh no it was just like I mean because we went to high school together all three of you yeah we all went to high school oh. together and like we all became friends, just like playing basketball, and then it was kind of like you know, like when high school guys just like kind of bond over. I- I'm not gonna lie, it-, it was bond over a mutual failure with girls. Girl. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, like oh fuck, the girl like this doesn't like me back. Oh, like it didn't work out. You suffered then, like, through it together. <laughs> yeah, and then like that's how like you kind of bond. It's like you either bond because like you're really cool and like you're like so like, the Chad with all the chicks, or you bond because you're the anti Chad, <laughs> and we were the anti Chad. Yeah. Oh yeah, we know what you mean. We're like literally <laughs> outcasts. <laughs> don't. 
Yeah, exactly. Right? You're the anti chat. So, like, oh shit, like, that's how we bonded. Okay. I've never told anyone that. Like, everyone's always like, oh, we're basketball. But in reality, it was bonding through being anti chat. Oh, <laughs> <yes. laughs> Trying to, like, secretly, like, we're like, all right, we gotta become chats. But we yawn because we are anti chat. Anti chat. You're not. Hey, that's it's a different so- kind of bond, you know, when you suffer together. That's a strong bond. It's like yeah. us, yes, been. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, look at all those locals. We're all, we're here at Kwai Mui together. <laughs> what, exactly. were the, what were the initial conversations like? Like, even before you started the channel, what were the initial conversations you had with them about, like, creating something? Oh, Do you remember? Oh, about Kanto Mando. Oh. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I started Kanto Mando first. At first, it was just me. Okay. And then, like, it started off as a language learning channel. I don't know if you guys know. No, no I no. think I remember reading a post of, because you, you've been selling Kansini, uh, Mandarin course, right? And I remember reading a post of how initially you wanted to teach. Was it Cantonese or Mandarin? So initially what happened was, like, I spoke zero Mandarin, and I had really bad Cantonese. And then what happened was, like, one summer I was, like, I I'd spent so long trying to learn the language, but I kept failing. And then I was like, oh, I'm going to try something else. Like, I'm going to try using my Cantonese to help me. And then, like, suddenly I was like, oh, wait, like, things are clicking fast. So even before I could even speak it that well, I was like, I'm going to make a YouTube channel trying to teach this. Oh, that's so inspiring. I, I was like, I was like, oh, like, if it helped me this much, hopefully it can help other people. Mm. Right? Oh. And I, and like, I think through, because I, I had that change that summer because I always hated being Chinese. I was like that Chinese kid who really wanted to be white. And so, like, that summer when I was kind of, like, learning a bit more and I discovered that thing, I was, like, I started to explore Chinese culture more and it made me start to appreciate, like, my Cantonese side and my Mandarin side. I mean, I mean, and like, I'm, like, learning Mandarin, not my Mandarin side. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I was, like, oh, shit, like, this is actually really cool. Like, it's, like, it's actually, I suddenly started with, like, Chinese songs, like, Canto songs, Mandarin songs. And I was, like, wow, if, like, I can help even one person through this and they can rediscover that part of their culture... Like, that'd be cool. So we made the channel. Okay. Yeah. But then, like, obviously Chinese not, wasn't sexy. <laughs> you became more anti-chat. Were you, like, teaching, like, as a teacher in a classroom? <laughs> I think it's, it might still be up, but, like, the first video, like, I could barely speak Mandarin at the time. Like, my tones were all off, and it was, like, a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> and then, uh, and then I remember, like, Mike, like, I showed it to Mike at that time, and he was, like, I was, like, hey, what do you think? He's, like... Bro, like, 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 it looks like my mom is singing karaoke kind of thing. Like, it's, what the hell is this? That's hilarious. Like, no one's gonna watch this. <laughs> yeah, I put it out. <laughs> he was right, no one watched it. But then I kept doing videos, and eventually he was like, I think he just thought it interesting, so he was like, oh, let me hop on and do it with you. Oh. That's nice. So we started doing it together. Oh, okay. And then eventually, like, we gave up on the whole teaching Chinese thing. Because oh. it was just, yeah, I was like, yeah, like this, like, this is too much effort mm-hmm. for absolutely zero results. Like, no one. Mm-hmm. Like, we, we, I think we had, like, six people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was really helpful. <laughs> and then, and then, and I was like, okay, well, yes. like, you know how much work it is to edit, edit right? It's a yeah. lot of fucking work. So true. Can I swear? Or is that? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, swear away. Yeah, it's a lot You're of fucking Sheldon. work. You're Sheldon. You can like, do anything. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, it's a lot of fucking work. So I gave up, right? And we, and we had engineering, I had engineering school again. And then I, I did almost master. And then what happened was like I was doing another internship like uh, like that summer, and like it was funny because at the time on my resume, right, I had fluent in Cantonese, I had fluent in Chinese in my resume. Oh. And you lie on French. your resume. <laughs> I had fluent in French in my resume too. Oh, wow. so I, I, I actually speak French. I speak French. Whoa. But, like, Cantonese and Mandarin at that time. Under toi. Under toi. Exactly. <laughs> so, but like the Cantonese and Mandarin, like I was a straight up lie at that time. <laughs> but, and I was like, wow, that's funny. I'm going to make a video about this. Yes. yes. And then that video, it was like a video how like we, we put Cantonese food on our resume and then like half it's English, right? Uh-huh. uh-huh. And then at that time, that video, I put it out. And it was like before TikTok, all this stuff. It was just to yeah. put it up. And then it just, it just like first no one watched it. And then all of a sudden, like three hours later, it was just Boom. people after people were tagging their friends like, oh. over and over again. They're like, oh my God, this is me. Over. Oh, that's 
Queen. That's so cool. It's like the first steps of being trend, like the trending. Um, yeah. Oh, this is me. This is me. This is so me type of thing. And then it's like crazy. At the time, it's like it was on Facebook, right? Like TikTok and stuff didn't exist. And then it's like you click on the other profiles, you see like, oh my god, this person's from Australia. This person's from like UK. It's like holy crap, this is crazy. <sighs> That's so cool. You know what? It reminds me of our like kind of our journey because you're right. Like in the beginning, I did like we did those like graphics with with like how to pronounce each word, even how to type it, like chokseng, and and like there's no one like this. Yeah, no one's watching. You're like, oh, what the, what the <laughs> hell am I doing this for? Like, am I doing it for me? Like, I should yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. What am I doing this for? <laughs> yeah. And then we became relatable, and then. We gain, you know, their interest. An audience. Yeah, yeah, an audience. Exactly. That's so and that's exactly. And so, yeah, when that video took off, all of a sudden I get a text from Mike being like, yo, that's sick, dude. Let's, let's get back into it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and then so he gets in. And then oh. after that, we just start doing it. And then eventually, like, the third guy, Edward, he yeah. just comes in. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And then next thing you know, it's us three. Mm. Wow. Uh, can you share a memorable interaction with a fan, like with fans? Funny, so the most memorable interaction I ever had, and this, I would say the one that means most to me, mm. right? And it, it's funny because I don't think I've ever mentioned this one, but so it was actually at a club. <laughs> and, and and it's not in the way you think, like, oh, like, or something, I don't know, even happened. But it's like, it's like, so what happened was I was at, I, I was at the club, right? And then, like, this girl comes up to me, right? I hope I'm saying something, I'm not listening to this. <laughs> but, so this girl comes up to me, and I remember at that time, like, I was, like, I was really, like, oh, like, I want to do, like, Cantonese Mandarin, like, different videos and stuff. And so we did a video with Shanghainese in it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, just kind of, like, us, like, listening to the language and stuff. Yeah. And it, 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 did, it did terrible. <laughs> But I remember, because, like, I was, like, passionate. Like, I, at that time, I was, like, oh, like, I really wanted to, like, help other people, like, so many people in this community who never see any content that revolves Shanghainese, right? And so the girl came up to me, and she was, like, oh, my God, it's Ken Amando. And she's, like, I, you know that video you had on Shanghainese? Like, I love that video because, like, I, I never, ever get to see anything in my language. And I was, like, I only speak Shanghainese. It's, like, Aww. that, it made me so happy to see that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And like, like, I think those interactions, like the ones where it's like, you know, you made me want to learn my language, you want to do X, Y, Z, like, like Mandarin or Cantonese, whatever. Those are the ones that mean the most to me. Yeah, it means it means a lot, right? When you put something out there, not sure if anyone would see it, but then in person you meet them and they're like really appreciating it. Exactly, because exactly. online it's just words, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Like, that's, that's it might be your mom. <laughs> Or just any you know bot. Like, like, you don't know. Yeah, it might be a bot. You're like, it might be your mom. So you go like, oh, oh, like, don't give up, Sheldon. You, I love the video, right? You don't know. JK, she's, the, she's one of the troll bots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like putting on a little mustache, like typing things out. And then she takes on a photo of her. You never know. Right? That's true. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Well, you know what? Um, before this interview, like, obviously, I was like trying to research you, like, try to refresh my mind. And you're from Macau? Or, like, this, your descendant is from Macau? Your parents are from Macau? Yeah, my, my parents are from Macau. Oh. <laughs> like, were they born there? Like, they're born there. Like, they, yeah, born there, like, grew up there. Um, like, we used to go back every summer. That's why I was like, whoa, wait, you're in Macau? I was like, that's so random. But then I was like, okay, I saw you went to China. So I was like, oh, maybe because they're, he's just going there. But I'm like, oh, Munyana. Oh, yeah, Munyana. Oh, well, I kind of want to know where oh, your parents oh, went to school now. Oh, 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 like, oh um, I think, it, what's it called? It was called, um, my mom went to this, my mom went to, uh, I think it's called Puitzing or something like that. <gasps> I mean, so I, that's what I was thinking. It's probably Puyting. That's the best school, I'm just saying. Like, yeah, it's one of the best schools oh, in, yeah. in my country. It's, oh, it's the okay. hardest school to get in. Like, uh, they're known for being top. Probably, in sports, too. Probably not 40 years ago. No. Oh. <laughs> probably, <laughs> like, if my mom's listening to this, she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I guarantee you 40 years ago, <laughs> probably just, just <laughs> everyone, man. Let's just take everyone. Oh, I see. And then I think my my dad went to, like, I know my dad went to 
I think it was an English school. I think it was called like Santa Maria or something like that. I forgot what it's called. Oh, single. How many? I, I don't know. Santa I, I, Rosa. Yeah, yeah, I think it's like, yeah, Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa. <laughs> That's my school. <laughs> I think so. I think it was that one. Well, because Santa Rosa is now a girls' school. I don't know before, but like oh. boys used to go there up to a certain age, and then they'll transfer to another school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he told me that. I think he told yeah? me that was a story. Yeah, I think so. He so. probably went to um Bos uh, Bao Bao Siko. Like oh, you are. Yeah. Oh. Oh, all you also sounds familiar. You oh, the all familiar. boys school. That's the all boys. You also sounds familiar. Like I, I mm-hmm. know that my dad didn't like my dad went to like a, a school that was more English focused. It wasn't as okay. Chinese focused. Then yeah, that's yeah. probably one of those. They were known yeah. to be like you know private oh. school students and like. Oh, yeah. I see. I see. I see. Yeah. <laughs> so but, crazy. Yeah, it's crazy because um, I mean like I feel the Macau pride now now that I'm older. Yeah. But like I remember when I was younger. I'm not gonna lie. Oh. Every time I went to Macau, I was like, "Wow, <laughs> 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 To be honest, nah, it is nah. small. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. small. No, especially because like when you're a kid, especially. I mean, like now when I go back, it's like I can go out on my own. But when you're a kid, yeah. it's mm-hmm. like I just spend the summer in my grandma's house. Yeah, that's not mine. And like all I do is just play like uh, Chun ID. Oh my god, uh, I beat the child, I beat. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I did. All I did was play that. And then I watched like Olam in Gonola. Uh-huh. You know Olam, right? It's I think it sounds familiar. Olam. And then Ding Dong. Ding oh, Dong. Ding Dong. Uh, the Frog. Oh, no. The oh, frogs. Oh, you, guys, you, guys, you guys are a different era. I, I know which I know which Anne you're talking about because I watched that. But like that was like yep. when I was older, I watched that one. It's cool because we're both 1995. I mean, we're three three of us 1995. Oh, you're 95 too? Yeah, we're, we're all 95. 95. You're 95 and you don't know Olam. I know Olam. It's, wait, I have just wait, forgot how, what it looks like. Is it a boy? It's a boy, right? It's, it's that boy who becomes like a, he's like a, a grown up, he's a detective. You know what? The one with the glasses, like, he, like yes. a they're short. Yeah. Because, you know, I'm like, we're girls. So we, maybe that, maybe we, we. Like... We didn't really watch Chinese cartoon growing up. We watch English. I did do too. switch channels in those four channels. You know, the two Hong Kong Fei Chui channels. Toy. Okay, yeah, Fei <laughs> Chui and TVP. And then there's the Pearl, like English Pearl. Yeah. And the uh, ATV, you know, like I would go to those sometimes too. Ah, I see, I see, I see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's insane. Because, uh, you know, I mean, the, there's a video that um, Fung Brothers like mentioned us they were like oh outcast from the 852 is in hong kong <laughs> yeah like how, like, how oh. does it feel like when you say like i don't know if that ever comes up like if, did you ever have to explain where macau is um, all the oh. time you know what actually was the most like my, like uh, on the canto pride thing uh did you guys watch shang chi yeah oh that yeah, was so, yeah in macau <laughs> yeah that like, was in macau scenes. but then like they had that scene like it was like it showed macau and then it was, they spoke Mandarin, and I was like, oh, I think. I think. I was, like, so excited. I'm like, I know Tony Leung's in it. I, I'm like, I, I, I was so excited to hear some canto in that moment. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah. And then they spoke Mandarin, and I was like, mm. And I was like, damn it. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, because, yeah, I mean, like, it's like we do the program, and, like, we want to help Cantonese speakers learn Mandarin. Mm. But at the same time, it's like we, like, it's canto pride, right? Like, we want people to embrace their Cantonese and just because you learn Mandarin doesn't mean you got to like abandon the Cantonese right oh, true yeah because yeah. better more is better obviously like yeah, if you learn Spanish you want to know Portuguese too I mean it's like exactly okay. it's like they shouldn't yeah so like I I, I wanted in that movie I was like I really want to hear Cantonese in that moment like s- at least one word like you got Tony Leung in there yeah, like, yeah. Mandarin. <laughs> at least a Kelefe passing by Dang, oh <laughs> yeah. like, at least that right just like someone passing by you know what I mean I remember I, I, was, I was just excited to see the Bank of China that I go to <laughs> when I was yeah. younger. Like, like, that, that's there. my bank. Yeah, that's my bank. Yeah. No, they have that. Like, what's that really tall casino? Uh, so there's the one on, like, not the Times I saw, but the Omun side. Like the, Lisboa? The yeah, yeah, Lisboa, Lisboa. Lisboa, yeah. That's, like, the, that's the one I saw in the... In the, in the, in the some poking. Some poking. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lisboa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wow. See. What is your favorite Cantonese dish? Like, what's the first thing you would get, like, order when you if you're in Macau right oh, now? Oh, in Macau? There's, like, um... So, like, I don't really know where it is, but 
there was a spot right downstairs from my grandma's house where mm. they had like this ngaolam ngaolam load. Oh my god, is this gum lay? So okay, I don't. Know. Or Macau. In Macau, in Macau. So oh, okay. okay, Macau. I'll tell you what it is like. You know where like the there's like the hospital on the mountain and there's like yeah, Sandang, uh -huh. yeah, Sandang, and there's like a sports arena there. Yeah, like, yeah, on the, yes. And then there's like uh, yeah, so on the right side of that sports arena is where like around that you Nam know, Locho is somewhere there. Yeah. Maybe maybe when you go next time you can check it out. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, we went to school right there, so we oh. ate, like oh, yeah, we probably there. crossed paths. We probably crossed paths. <laughs> probably. Badges. But you you said you started the channel like your Kanto Mano channel with teaching, um, and then you, you turn into something else like the content kind of just you guys having fun together with Chinese, and then now you're back to teaching, um, Mandarin, right? Teaching. Yeah, exactly. Because I mean, what happened was it was like so we did the YouTube channel, and then like when you quit your jobs and you do YouTube, right? It's like mm. everything's on YouTube, right? And so it's just like we're like, okay, we need to perform make sure we can feed ourselves right and in our minds at that time like this chinese theme stuff unfortunately it didn't it didn't really feel like it would it would, it would do that for us you know what i mean okay. yeah it's like we need to make sure that we make a living out of this mm -hmm. and we couldn't find that with audience at the same time though it was like people loved watching us do all these like you know random things yeah. i think at the time at the time not a weird flex <laughs> girls thought we were really cute so it was just like that was the direction we were moving in. Yeah. Wow. And, and so like it, it felt it was like, oh cool, like awesome, we're doing great in YouTube and like um like we're seeing views, we're seeing success. But I think like a part of me always felt sad that like it's like I had this whole goal in the beginning of wanting to inspire people mm. to learn the language, you know, embrace their Cantonese and then help them learn Mandarin to hopefully help them reclaim their culture and you know, feel that. And so some part of me just like was like i'm gonna make a course i don't know if anyone's gonna want it but i'm just gonna do it wow right and so i told the guys i'm like i'm gonna do it like i i truly don't know if anyone wants it like I, but i'm like i i think i, I want to do it i just because i it's like i feel like i have this like i feel like i have this thing that i want to give <sighs> because there's, there's, there's so much to cantonese and mandarin that it's like when you have to use like the traditional like Chinese school stuff that we have to use or like whatever it's just so hard to learn yeah yeah and so yeah we, we built that out I built that out it took like over two years wow and then and then when I put it out I, I was like okay like blueprint yeah I could have been a blueprint and wow. then I put it out and then I was like okay like if I even have one person say they're interested I'll, I'll like be ecstatic in him like 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 jump 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 against jump on the bed and then yeah, like right away, like people were like, "Oh my god, I really needed this," and I was like, "Holy crap!" <laughs> That's like this is wild. nuts. That is. And then nuts. So, yeah, and then suddenly it's like all these people start saying things like, "Oh my god," like um, like the students, like, "Oh my god," like I, I finally feel like I can, because a lot of them they, they feel that like embarrassment where it's like, like you know, so you know when like Chinese people come up to you and they like start start talking to you in Mandarin because you look Chinese, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then you, you're like, oh, "I speak Cantonese," so like, mm -hmm. "Oh, I don't finally don't feel that anymore. I can finally talk to them. I can like help the grandpa on the street." You know, I can like start using it and like I could travel to China, speak to my family, I could travel to like anywhere. And it's just like when the, when those came in, I was like, wow, that's so cool. Nice. And, like that means a lot. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. kind of crazy. Yeah, so I'm not going to lie. Like still to this day, the one that means the most is when they say I improve my Cantonese. You improve yeah. my Cantonese, I see. I think, I don't know, if, like, um, I, I think a lot of people might have felt this growing up, but growing up, like, to be honest, until the age of, like, 14, I thought we were the majority. Cantonese? Like, I, yeah, I, cause, because I think, like, everyone in, um, like, a lot of the immigrants in Canada are Cantonese speakers, right? So, I mean, like, you probably I grew up around a lot of Cantonese, Exactly. Right? Like, no, my, literally my entire yeah, community yeah, yeah. was, I, I actually think that even Mike, because Mike is, Mike is from Beijing, uh -huh. but he came here at six, he thought he was a minority, too. <laughs> like, he, like, like he thought he thought he was the minority. That's so, until, so interesting. Like, until fourteen, I thought that, like, like literally all the communities in in um in in Toronto, 
like it's changing now in recent years as more Mandarin speakers come. Okay. But growing up, they were all Cantonese. But it it makes sense though, because I feel like it makes sense that you guys are the majority in your area because that's a lot of can most of Cantonese exactly. moved away, right? Exactly. Yeah. So it's like only in recent years has it really shifted, mm -hmm. and okay. now unfortunately, I mean, I can't say unfortunately, but I guess I can't say unfortunately. It's like when I go to a grocery store, I used to say like, "Oh, they help guy, whatever." Now mm -hmm. I say like, "Oh, the house is here," right? Uh huh. Uh -huh. Just the way things have have changed, Change. but. Like, yeah, so I, I thought we were the majority until, like, 14. No, and then, I, see, I feel, I feel that. I, I yeah. think us, too, like, when we were in Macau, especially without social media and stuff, how would yeah, you Yeah, you don't know? realize. Exactly. Yeah. Until yeah. you actually get out there or go to China. Like, yeah, I only remember using Mandarin in China, like, when we go, you know, to yeah. the underground mall to, to bargain. Ji hoi, ji hoi, ji hoi. Ji hoi, yeah, yeah. Ji hoi, yeah, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that place, that place is, that place is busted. Yeah, I love yeah. going there. That's, that's so cheap. But yeah, yeah oh, exactly, yeah. exactly. No, so, um, yeah, and then I remember when I found out that we were the minority. I remember I was talking to my cousin that time, and I was like, I was like, damn it, like if only we, like if only we were born in mainland China instead, mm -hmm. and then we could Mandarin, because now we have this useless. This language, yeah, yeah. I, I, as in like, like it's it's truly how I felt. And that's I how like, exactly how we felt too. Yeah. We thought it was useless that we learn the wrong Chinese. Exactly, exactly. And and it was so interesting because I felt that for a long time, and I was like, oh, I, I know this useless Chinese, right? And, and then oh, it was it was actually surprisingly when I started learning Mandarin, right? That uh -huh. I started to realize how cool Cantonese was, right? Uh -huh, because uh -huh. it's like you realize that there's just there's certain ways to express yourself that you just don't have in Mandarin uh, first. I see. Yeah. What other ways would it be like different? I guess from your experience, right? Learning from native English speaker. Like even even for instance, like music, right? Mm -hmm. There's a certain there's a certain difference that a certain different feel that Cantonese songs have that Mandarin cannot emulate. Like mm -hmm. you know the song like uh Fuji Sanha, right by Yisen Chen. Mm-hmm. Fuji Sanha, right? Chen. Yeah, so, we know he's in China, but not the song. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, 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 no, she's, okay, I'm not gonna sing it. So, it does it not sound so, no, 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 Right. Like deeper, like this like they're deep. deeper. Like Mandarin is like I love you, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm, Whereas like mm -hmm. Cantonese is called like under the Fuji Mountain, right? It's just like uh -huh. it sounds deeper, right? Ah. Uh -huh. And then two is it just there's a certain beauty to it, yeah. and so it was like because I learned Mandarin, and I, I don't think I would have, I don't think I ever would have taken, like I don't think I ever would have developed that interest in the Chinese language, and that made me appreciate my Cantonese more and then it made me really realize I, I love the, I love the Cantonese that I have beautiful it's true that's yeah true. It's, I've never heard it from someone who you know learned um Cantonese and Mandarin as a native English speaker because I think yeah that's for us we grew up with it so we can't sure we have fun with the language right but we yeah. can't really see from the outside perspective so it's interesting to hear mm. um, yeah definitely but yeah, so the Cantonese music like, is so true though because exactly. uh, and it's hard to make because yeah. it's hard to rhyme yeah. um in Cantonese right that's what I heard yeah mm. and and I think a, a big thing because I know a lot of people have felt that like useless language thing right and it's like it doesn't have to be Mandarin or Cantonese like it can be both yeah. right and that's that's what we want to like help people that's with and it's it's so so it's funny after I learned Mandarin and the first time I went to Beijing mm -hmm. I literally got in a cab right and the first thing the guy said oh you should go nowhere and I'm like oh. and then immediately he's like oh, oh well, man, we love Cantonese songs like he like, with so much passion he's like oh, he's like, oh well, and I was like oh. and then he just started playing like <laughs> right i know that's and then and then and then like it was like suddenly it's like this whole like unlock he's like he's like oh uh hey uh, right i'm like duh, 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 duh. he's like oh what did i do i'm like he's like i really want to learn and i'm like 
like <laughs> it's just it's 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 so it's not like Cantonese or Mandarin. It, it's like there's there's a beauty to Cantonese that yeah. that uh, so many a lot of people like really appreciate. A lot of people like see language like oh it's a tool like that's all it yeah. is. But now really I mean you can connect to people in this, these ways even though you're. Like one is not even fluent yeah. in Cantonese. <laughs> exactly. There's just so many ways to express one thing, like in Cantonese. Exactly. This is like so many. It's so creative. Even exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you right now. Like I was, I was, I was also just in uh, Yunnan, oh. Yunnan, right? Mm. And the same thing there. Like another guy, his plays 100% Cantonese songs. And he's just like, <laughs> I, I really want to learn. Like oh. it's crazy to me. To me. Even in like the streets, like in the night markets, it's, it's Cantonese songs. I'm like. Like, I was, like me and my mom were there. I was like, "Why am I hearing like Leslie Chung here in here in Yunnan?" It's, it's like, it's, it's almost like yeah, it was very strange, but I like it. It made me very so yeah. It's just like all those moments and things reinforcing that just made me realize like it's just yeah. I I really love and I'm really yeah. proud of that Cantonese background. I'm sure you guys. Are, I know you guys are too. Awesome. We're very proud, but like we yeah. literally our last um episode, we were talking about how we learned the wrong Chinese, you know, <laughs> like because uh, just like what you said, we thought we we were learning the the norm, the the one that most people spoke beside us, and yeah, and and also just growing up, I think like when studying Mandarin or like having Mandarin classes, it feels like that's the main language of the country China, yeah. so you gotta know it and so we were so good at it so we're like almost embarrassed like oh we don't know mandarin we only know cantonese mm-hmm. you know like i'm telling you like <clears throat> right now because uh like our our program teaches cantonese speakers how to use their cantonese to help them learn mandarin faster right mm-hmm. yeah but we've gotten so many people asking for can we have mando to canto the other way around <laughs> and i'm like and, and that's crazy to me too i'm like oh like because we always think about it from the perspective of like, oh, like use, like, oh, there's all these people in Mandarin, but like so many people just want to learn Cantonese because, I mean, it's it's a beautiful language. And, and recently, there's a lot more um, Canto influencers too, like exactly. popping up, like making fun content, and so I guess yeah. you know, see yeah. that. I exactly. love that. Like, I love how like it's re- we are really a diaspora. We're everywhere. Yeah. And yeah that's also, right, yeah. I mean, I do also want to point out because there's this like I I, I like. I, I think this narrative is destructive, mm. but um, there's this, you know, the narrative like Cantonese is dying, right? Mm. Cantonese is dying is the most destructive narrative in the world. Mm. Tell me, it, elaborate. And, and the reason why is because people think that when you say Cantonese is dying, it inspires other people to want to learn it mm. and to want to, to, but why would anyone want to learn a dying language? Yeah. So why would I want to go on a falling ship, right? So like that's why like I I despise that narrative because that narrative only it only serves people who already speak it, which yeah. is not important at all because you don't want you don't want like who cares if they already speak it then they're not going to learn it. So mm-hmm. you want to inspire the people to want to learn it, and so that yeah. narrative only makes it worse. Yeah, right. Right, but in reality, there's more Cantonese speakers than there are Korean speakers. Yeah, and that's definitely like new to us too. Like I guess we only learned that narrative starting this channel and like people talking about it right like but when we were in macau it was like never heard of it like everyone's just normally living their lives with cantonese so it's definitely like new i will say when i was in macau last i did hear like some like little school girl speak mandarin oh like, yeah no it's <laughs> slowly <Yeah. laughs> i mean because a lot of a lot of mainland chinese Asian. students like to come to study it's in macau studying. too oh, yeah, yeah. But it's I, almost like, like they were like they were like like grade five or something. Yeah, I remember even before coming to America because I was a tutor for a little bit, English te- uh-huh. tutor, and I had to teach a class in Ho Gong. Ho Gong is like this Chinese school, and I, sometimes I had to speak Mandarin because some of them couldn't understand Cantonese. So yeah. I'm like, oh God, I have to use my Mandarin. But now oh, it's yeah. a lot more. Um, I, I worked at a, a at a resort and you have to know Mandarin like as a requirement. We have a lot of because we are, I talk to a lot of different students and everything in the program and a lot of our students are people who work in Hong Kong mm. and they keep saying this one thing like if you work in Hong Kong now like you have to speak Mandarin. Mm. So it's just yeah it's the way it's gone it but it, it, it doesn't mean the end of Cantonese. What about Toronto? Is it still like 
bustling with Cantonese? Like, I know you mentioned that you had to greet someone in Mandarin, but... I mean, I think... I mean, I'm not going to lie. I feel like normally I can tell right away if someone's going to speak, speak Mandarin or, or Cantonese. Yeah? You, you feel like you have that... Like, it's a weird sixth sense you have. <laughs> I don't know if you have it. Like... Not yet. Maybe not perfected yet. <laughs> I would usually if hear, I listen if they speak yeah. If I went first. into Chinatown, I wouldn't be able to tell if they speak Canto or Mando yet. Really, I I feel like there I have like a I don't know what it is because I mean inevitably it's like there's such a mix of people right. There's there's even like people in Hong Kong with ancestry and like you know uh, like some northern part of mainland China right. But something about I don't know Cantonese speakers like even before they talk they have a certain vibe like I've just been able to differentiate at, at no, least no, no. like at least between like like Cantonese ABCs and like oh. Mandarin ABC or even like I feel like I can tell so Ma- like, like mannerisms it's certain mannerisms yeah okay. certain mannerisms I, you, you, I don't know if you, well you get... in in Macau we definitely see the difference between Omunyan and Dialogyan yeah. Definitely. That's that definitely see the difference. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and uh, Florida, like, y- yeah, like we just have so little Asian people around us. Uh, so when I do, like, like when I go to an Asian market, is it Cantonese or Mandarin? Cantonese, I because I only heard. I know because I heard her on the phone, like Dema, hi, hi, my kamo. I know. Like, no. I I was like, oh hi, oh Munyan. Like I was so happy, <laughs> and then she's like. I actually feel like now, um, there's like a, I feel like the, the, the so this is kind of like where like it's, it's so helpful to speak the language because I feel like now it's like you kind of people more default to Mandarin to start, but then once they realize you speak Cantonese too, it's like, oh, yeah. it's like that like secret, like, like connections unlocked and you're like, oh my God, like suddenly it's like. Like the war just blur- burnt out, you know what I mean? Yeah, that is so true. Um, I don't know if I ever told. Uh, so there was a time when we were working with like someone from mainland China, mm. right? And like, I guess like because we were the the, the call started off in English, mm. like we just spoke in English, right? Yeah. And then like suddenly, <laughs> like I could see like she was like, clearly struggling, and like we like I was like okay, like you can I speak Mandarin if you want, and she's like oh. You can English with go you mind. And I was like, and, oh. and then like suddenly it's like suddenly it was like it was like just like a, a word vomit on me. Yeah. And I yeah, feel like yeah. it's the same. I feel like it's the same when I speak to like a, a Cantonese person who like was speaking Mandarin and then like, oh wait, you speak Cantonese? Oh. <laughs> but sometimes I'm like, you know, also I, I kinda wanna like, you know, maybe they wanna test out their English. So I'm like, you know, I'll I'll speak in English, but sometimes, you know, they're really struggling and I spoke Cantonese. Yeah, they would be like, oh they say Gong Man. Yeah, and they're like, and they would just Hey Joe Gong. I am thankful for my yeah. upbringing for sure because yeah. hey i mean dark days make warriors <sighs> oh thank you so much sheldon for making time for us like uh one more question joe if we ever visit toronto you know canada because there's a lot of Cantonese speakers there like telling us like you should visit blah, blah, blah. yeah where what, what's the top restaurant should we uh visit first if you came like five, eight years ago, oh. I would say, I would say, I would say, because my mom, my mom had a Cantonese restaurant growing up, and I would just plug that in. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, it was actually, closed down. It was actually, it's, it's, it was actually the bomb. Like oh. it's like a. It's what called kind of gay. Cantonese restaurant? Like like. Gay. Lun gay. Lun gay. Lun gay. Lun gay. Lun gay. Wow. Yeah. It was like it was kind of like like Thailand kind of food. Mm. Like kind of, I know, oh, a lot of like Macau kind of food too, actually. <gasps> Tonga, like um, I was gonna say like um, Gokai Pak. Well, that's that's everywhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Those ones, like what's up, Gokai or something like that. Oh, oh. Like, that kind of stuff. What you got, Yeah, that's the stuff. Um, but now, so it depends what you want, right? I mean, I'm not gonna recommend like you can like you can get like all like the generic steak and all that stuff. But actually, um, there's another restaurant. Uh, Woodstone. That actually, they they do have a lot of Macau stuff. Oh, like Chu Papao. Oh. Um, <laughs> what was it? Um, what else do they have? Like like the. Well, we gotta go thing. one day. I know we gotta. What? Like you know how like they have they have a lot of, like that like it's like I think it's called like Macau. Maca- oh!
Bacayao, baby. Those cod. Uh, fried cod. Yeah, the cod, mm. the fried cod. Like that's a Macau mm -hmm. thing, you know what I mean? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, like, definitely. Mm, um, oh, you know, you know, oh, you know what? Um, they also have um, you know, how Omoon has like the faith out guy. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is like the weirdest thing. Like, why is Macau I know. A dish? African <laughs> chicken. I remember, like, I remember my friend came. No, I think I was with my girlfriend, right? I was with my girlfriend, right? And then I was like, okay, uh, yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, oh, you think I'm watching like a a and she's like, what? I'm like, what? Like, well, like, I don't even think I have Fei in Canada. Like, why am I getting it in the like, No, it's like, it's like one of our national dishes. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, it's like the dish of Portuguese. Yeah, and I'm like, Fei Tokai, dum dum Like, I thought, like, you know, I would say, like, I thought Fei Tokai should be spicy. Yeah, it's it's the weirdest thing. Um, but yeah, so they have they have Fei Tokai too as well. Wow. So, wow. uh, that one. Dude, we gotta go. That one. We gotta I know, Macau we Pride. gotta make a trip. We gotta make a trip. Yeah, that one for the Macau Pride. <laughs> um, yeah, so. that one's good. Yeah, if you guys pull up, just let me know. Yeah, I guess just, like, one of the last thing, like, I know you mentioned, you know, like, right now you're trying to, uh, share this Canto Mando blueprint, and, but, like, what's the plan, I guess, with Canto Mando, like, the channel itself, like, What's the blueprint you... of your channel? <laughs> right, like, do your partnership with your friends, and, like, um, what does that look like, or future of the channel? Yeah, so, I mean, the, the channel right now is headed towards the direction of more food-based entertainment. Ooh, right? I didn't because see Uncle Roger! Exactly, Uncle, Uncle Roger, Uncle right? Roger! <laughs> and it's because, like, we have, it's like, we also have a, a strong love for food as well right yes and so there's love of food and oh, yes, like we all know everyone loves food mm -hmm. so uh we have love of food so and then also i mean edward just put out um his mom has this chili oil oil yeah i just saw that I, yeah. I, I, I think it's the funniest name like he called it my mom's chili oil i was like <laughs> like it, it's it's funny it, it's it's like i'm like because i remember he was like yo that's my mom's chili oil and then he's like because i remember he was thinking of a name for the chili oil and then he's like why don't i just call it my mom's chili oil i was like, <laughs> like are you sure bro like <laughs> You just want to call my mom's chili oil? That but, is. I mean, yeah. And then like, and then like, and then like a week later, he's like, "All right, I, I, I got the domain. I got everything." I'm like, "You actually oh. called mom's chili oil?" <laughs> hey, it's relatable. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. Oil, you know. <laughs> I guess. Um. So yeah, I mean, it's going down that direction, and I think it, it's it's more fitting because mm. I think that one thing about us is like, so when I started the channel, right, my passion was around language and sharing mm. like the Chinese culture sharing you know like the cantonese mandarin and mm -hmm. Chinese, everyone helping everyone embrace that but for them that actually wasn't their passion mm -hmm. right and so we had a lot of different switches and conflicts through the years because we had so many captains and head steer in the boat who wanted mm -hmm. to go in different directions like mm -hmm. i cared about language they cared about um like different things and so i i, I still love food and i still love the channel and so I think, but I also think it's great that, you know, the channel gets to go in this direction of food at the same time, you know, I get to find that fulfillment of being able to help people Three by years. doing the program mm -hmm. and wow. like to get to the Mandel blueprint and all that stuff. So I, I think that that's the direction of the channel is more food-based entertainment. Yum. That's the direction we're going, building on that, and then keep going. Keep going, yeah! Like, yeah. Y'all can put your minds in anything, like you know. Yeah, I think yeah. that's like the big thing. Like you can, you can do anything, and you just gotta go for it, right? Yeah, yeah, and I, think I know, I know, you guys just launched your thing too. Yes, yes, we're trying to get more people, like you know, into the community, the Cantonese community. You know. Oh, congrats! That's oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, like we'll we'll make more Cantonese speakers so that they can go to the Canto Manda route too. You know, like hey, we can yeah. we can have that as like a maybe we will talk about that maybe like yeah le level Next one thing. get the Cantonese and level two <laughs> use your Cantonese to help you learn Mandarin. Blueprint, yes. yeah. yeah. You know, oh my God, stay tuned, guys. That would be legendary. It would be. That would be legendary. That's like the stack. People yep. from Macau doing it, people. <laughs> that would be that would be legendary. Yeah, dude, oh I God. feel like I I would have probably benefited from the blueprint too. Like you know, yeah, learning the you know what helps. Dude, it's, it's, yeah. it's actually so interesting. Um, I don't know how much of it you've seen, but like you know, there's tones in Cantonese, right? Right. Yeah. Do you know how they relate to Mandarin? Did you ever learn that? No. Yeah. 
Popo Mofo, we've learned Popo Mofo. So, oh, but I didn't know how Canto so, related to man. You know, for example, like, like, so you know, man, a Cantonese, you have six tones, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there's actually linkages between the two. So tone one in Cantonese, go, right, actually becomes tone one in Mandarin, like, 90% of the time. So, go, go, san, sam, san, right? San, shan, right? Same thing. See, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, it's like it's yeah. mind blowing, right? Because it, it, it is. Because yeah. what You're that right. means is like, as long as you know what the word sounds like in Cantonese. Because I, I I don't know what you guys, but like I think one of the hardest things when I was trying to learn Mandarin was remembering what the tones for the freaking words were. Mm-hmm. I knew I was like okay, G, but I was like, is it G? Is it, yeah. Is it G? Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but if you know what the it sounds like in Cantonese, so you know it's Sky Tone One. Mm-hmm. This guy maps to tone one in Mandarin ninety percent of the time, so you know it's yeah. cheap. I want Mandarin as well. Yeah. Look at him, the Look little that, tips. Guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is so nice. Now, That's if so you're nice. interested in this, check out Cantonese the Blueprint. Yes, <laughs> link below, link below. Okay. And if you're interested oh. in learning Cantonese, <laughs> you know the Outcast team oh, got you, right? Endorsement. <laughs> thank you, thank you, oh, Sheldon. God. This oh God, crazy. I know, I know. I'm still like, kind of like. I um, know. Stuff, like, I just keep call. thinking about the first time that I found your channel and like how, oh. like, like you guys are so cool. It'd be so cool to just chat with you and like now I'm here. The number one, when, when you DM us to like collab, I'm like, oh my god. Oh. No, no, you guys yeah. are making me nervous. You guys are making me feel like I'm, I'm like. I'm <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, am I that cool? I'm not that cool. <laughs> The uh, anti chad glow up here. Uh, hey, <laughs> I guess like I guess I got cooler after the chad glow up. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm definitely not chad. Like I I, I fully no, no, no. accepted it. I think there was a period of time no, when I was like, I was like I can become a chad, and then no, it's, it's, it's not. It's not me. Why There's no be chad, chad anyway? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You know what's good, Chad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Um. So, any more uh, last uh, things you wanna um shout mention? out? Yeah, mm. shout out or before we yeah. end the call. Yeah, I think uh yeah, I think the last thing is just going back to the thing we said earlier. It's like, especially because I I know like how passionate we all are about Cantonese is is like yeah that whole narrative of like Cantonese is dying or whatever like. Fuck that narrative. Yeah, don't even say that. Fuck that narrative. Don't say that narrative. Don't say it, right? Like, if you're a Cantonese speaker and you're listening to this, like, have pride in your culture because so many people, lo- like, love Cantonese and, yeah. want, and want to be able to speak it. And, like, you have to remember, like, I, and I, 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 there is 100% more Cantonese speakers than there are Korean speakers. Oh, I think I did read somewhere like that. Yeah, and even exactly. one of the answers response that we got on our like question on the story, yeah. they, did, they did put the numbers exactly. like Korean, exactly. there are more Cantonese speakers. Exactly. And so yeah. you don't see Korean people being like, oh, like, it's you know, whatever. Language. So it's like, right, right. If, if, if we want to have Cantonese prosper and everything, we need to focus on promoting the positives of it. Yeah, and showing the music, showing all that. Mm-hmm. And, it's like, and the it's, jokes. It's, it's, yeah, because just, just like, think about it, like some, some random, like how many BTS fans want to learn Korean? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's huge, yeah. right? So many like, people like, want to learn. Mm-hmm. If, 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 you know, you know Mirror, right? Mm-hmm. If, if Mirror just pops up, then everyone's going to want to learn Cantonese. <laughs> and then we won't have this stupid narrative anymore, right? That's true. Yeah. yeah. C-pop. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> pop, yeah. Yeah. The, the, the only thing for me though is I still like the older sea pops. You know, like yeah, it's song Hokao by uh, Tan you know song? It sounds familiar, but that's like not. truly old. No, I only know like the popular okay. one, like Beyond. <laughs> oh yeah, Beyond. Oh, uh, Hoi Fu Tin Hong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that song. Okay. Oh my god, but yeah, so it's just like that. It's like yeah, like let's not focus on saying Cantonese is dying, like, no more Cantonese mm-hmm. is dying narrative, mm-hmm. but let's focus on promoting the positives mm-hmm. uh, and how awesome Cantonese is, because if some random chick from St. Louis, Missouri, who loves BTS, wants to learn Korean because she watched <laughs> BTS video, then all we need is some motherfucking Cantonese pop star to blow the hell up, and then get some kid, some, some random chick from yeah. St. Louis, Missouri to want to learn Cantonese, <laughs> and then, next thing you know, Cantonese is, like, the most popular language in the world. Yeah, right? watch us. Let's focus on that. 
Exactly. Yeah. Let's focus on that. That's like my final thing. And like that's awesome. what I want. That's perfect. Share. Powerful yeah. message perfect. from Sheldon Ho, guys. Thank thank your girlfriend also because she, she me. enjoy Taiwan. Right. Yeah, she 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 put an unhappy face when I told her I couldn't talk to her right now on FaceTime. Oh, so. we're sorry. <laughs> Tell me say hi. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> I have to go. I have to go. Apologize. Oh, don't worry. Have fun. Have fun. Bye bye.